Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, we will be discussing with you, Top 10 Amazing Places to Visit in Granada, Spain. Number 10, Carrera del Daro. Queen Isabella the Catholic ordered the construction of the Cathedral of Granada in 1505. The side naves are filled with numerous chapels of different periods and styles, all full of exceptional works of art, including the Virgin de la Antigua, the first patron saint of Granada. The Cathedral of Granada is a monumental complex that includes the tabernacle and the royal chapel, making it one of the largest in Europe. Granada's cathedral has a rectangular base due to its five naves that completely cover the cross. All of the five naves are staggered in height. Number 9, Alcaiseria. The Alcaiseria, home of the Great Bazaar of Granada, was originally a series of streets between Plaza Nueva and Plaza Bibrambla, bursting with stalls selling Arabic silks, spices, and other precious goods. Alcaiseria is home to Granada's souvenir stalls, selling a variety of Arabic craftwork, such as the fajalaza, traditional local painted ceramics, terracea, wooden inlay, in items such as desks, chessboards, or trinket boxes, and typical granadino farolas, stained glass lamps. You can see a modern take on these lamps throughout the city center, white versions are used as streetlights, and they are found as decoration in tetirias, tea rooms, shops, and bars. Number 8, San Juan de Dios Museum. Saint John is considered one of Spain's leading religious figures. He founded the Brothers Hospitallers of Saint John of God, a worldwide Catholic religious institution dedicated to the care of the poor and sick. The Casa de los Pisa, where this museum is located, was built by the Pisa family in the 15th century. This rich family became famous for looking after Saint John when he was very ill. It contains lots of paintings, metalwork, furniture, porcelain, and the iconography of St. John. This museum is considered as a valuable source of history and the most important of its kind in Andalusia. Number 7, Corral del Carbon. The Corral del Carbon was built in the 14th century by Yusuf I, at the height of the Nasrid period, and was used to store goods for sale there, as well as to house the merchants who passed through the city. Later, in the 16th century, the Christians adapted it for theatrical performances. The building consists of an entrance pavilion that leads to the inner courtyard surrounded by galleries and rooms. The center is occupied by a square stone basin with lateral spouts. The Corral del Carbon has a very impressive exterior facade with a large pointed horseshoe arch. The entrance door is awe-inspiring and promises even greater treasures and beauty inside. Number 6, Cartuja Monastery. The church has a single nave, divided into three parts. The first part was for the monks, the second part immediately behind this for the laity, and the third, near the door of the church, was for the people. The chapel has a dazzling appearance hard to describe because of the chromatic richness of its marbles. The Cartuja Monastery is an example of a unique Baroque style and offers great paintings and sculptures of the Granada School. In the Monasterio de la Cartuja, Cartuja Monastery, of Granada, also called Monasterio de Nuestra Señora de la Asuncion, you will find the Spanish Baroque in its maximum splendor, probably the best example of Spain. During the visit, two very different parts are distinguished by their style. Number 5, Granada Cathedral. Granada Cathedral is located in the center of the city, between Oficios, Plaza de las Paziegas and Gran Via de Colón streets. The first stone of the cathedral was laid in 1523, on the day of the Incarnation. Its construction lasted 181 years, it was finished in 1704. The side naves are filled with numerous chapels of different periods and styles, all full of exceptional works of art, including the Virgin de la Antigua, the first patron saint of Granada. The Cathedral of Granada is a monumental complex that includes the tabernacle and the royal chapel making it one of the largest in Europe. Of the two towers planned, only one was erected and its height had to be lowered by almost 30 meters, since the foundation for a Gothic building could not withstand the heavy mass of its tower. In the Cathedral Museum you can find, however, the drawing of Diego de Siloes' original project. Number 4, Royal Chapel. The building's overall design, large glass windows and buttresses were inspired by Gothic architecture. The chapel was dedicated to St. Louis, the patron saint of the king and an ancestor of the royal house, and included references to the Saint-Chapelle of Paris which he had founded. 
Although the interior elevation with its layout on two floors follows the usual format for Palatine chapels, its architecture with its imposing colonnade on the first floor was clearly inspired by antiquity. The building's overall design, large glass windows and buttresses were inspired by Gothic architecture. The chapel was dedicated to St. Louis, the patron saint of the king and an ancestor of the royal house and included references to the Saint Chapelle of Paris which he had founded. Although the interior elevation with its layout on two floors follows the usual format for Palatine chapels, its architecture with its imposing colonnade on the first floor was clearly inspired by antiquity. Number 3, Parquet de las Sciences. Parquet de las Sciences is a science center and museum, part of the European network of science centers and museums. In a society where people have more time for recreational activities, higher levels of education and a longer average lifespan, the general public has become much more interested in health, medical sciences, and new biohealth technologies. The hall aims to promote awareness of what is currently known about health and life sciences by providing a general overview of the field, linking the different sciences and techniques involved, these include the human body, anatomical sciences, the study of the senses, genetics and the genetic engineering revolution, which help visitors to understand the wide range of different risks and hazards to which we are exposed. Number 2, Sacramont. Sacramont, sometimes also called Sacramont, is a traditional neighborhood in the eastern area of the city of Granada in Andalusia, Spain. The origin of the houses excavated on the slopes of Sacramont, the traditional dwelling type of the neighborhood, is not very clear. It is assumed that they began to be built from the 16th century, after the Jewish and Muslim populations were expelled from their homes and intermixed with the nomadic Romani, adopting some of their customs. Sacramont has just one main street, Camino del Sacramont, which is lined with caves primed for tourists and restaurants ready to fight over the bill. Don't come here expecting to get a deal on anything. Intriguing lanes run above and below this main drag a steep hike above Camino del Sacramont is the cliffhanging, parallel secondary street, Vereda de Enmedio, which is less touristy, with an authentically residential vibe. Number 1, The Alhambra. The Alhambra is situated in a locale of rare natural beauty. The plateau upon which it was built overlooks the Albaycin, Albaycin, quarter of Granada's Moorish Old City. At the base of the plateau, the Daro River flows through a deep ravine on the north. The park outside the palace, Alameda de la Alhambra, was planted by the Moors with roses, oranges, and myrtles. Its most characteristic feature, however, is the dense wood of English elms brought there in 1812 by the Duke of Wellington during the Peninsular War. The present entrance through the oratory leads to the Patio de los Arrayanes, Court of the Myrtles. This court is 140 feet, 43 meters, long by 74 feet. In the center is a large reflecting pond set in the marble pavement. They are really amazing. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe.